What is your worst experience with bad neighbors? My mother lives in a suburban area. One of her neighbors is mental. He stalks people, mostly women, but not exclusively, regularly and at some point picked one particular female neighbor and sticked with her. He would go around and look through her windows, would try entering all doors, even did at some point, and follows her with his car. All that while occasionally doing this to the other neighbors too. He would often stand on his balcony, drinking beer and yelling how everyone hates him and then start crying. One time he went on the street, lay down with arms and legs on the air, started wiggling, then got up and went back in as if nothing happened. Several attempts to call the police on him ended with them saying, how about you make a big party with all of the neighbors, drink something with him and just get along. The stalked neighbor started filming him to have evidence. She had lots of it. But the police was not interested. Another neighbor went to the police too and complained and said that there must be many cases, of the other neighbor, be already there. There was none. They didn't even file the complaints. This was going on for eight, years, five years focusing on this particularly neighbor. The main victim has serious mental health issues by now. One month ago she found a charity that helps with cases like this. They helped and the police got off their asses, but still said they couldn't do much except for a restaining order. Which they wouldn't react to. With the help of the organization she went to court. The neighbor was lying but got caught, since everything was on camera. The judge was really shocked how this could have been going on with such overwhelming evidence and nobody doing anything. He was sentenced to prison or mental institution. Even with everything going on, I hope it's the latter and he will get serious help. This is a sick person after all. This is not America. It's not as rural as America can be but it's a small city with 1-2k inhabitants. My mother told me police is like this where she lives, but it gets better with younger officers. Also my grandpa was witness to a murder attempt in the 7-0 IES, with a bleeding person lying on the floor and the woman with the knife still there, and called the police. The officer said he doesn't want to be bothered, since he just returned from participating in a race in a rural area and is still exhausted. That was the 7-0 IES. It got better, but I guess not by much. Reminds me of our neighbor downstairs who moved in just after we did. Was a wife, husband, daughter, and grandson. They were fine for a few months, then the husband found out that we had a dog then it was suddenly 24 sevenths noise complaints about us having a dog to the point that cops were called. They said that the dog was barking all the time, running and jumping inside the house. Banging and bashing. In the end, the cops wanted us to file a harassment complaint and our management was going to help too because he was harassing her as well. When he found out about it and that the manager was 100% on our side, he started screaming threats and insults and nearly hit me and my dog then on another occasion my sister with his car, etc. The rest of his family were quite nice. The grandson had a bit of a temper, wife rarely ever smiled or spoke, but I could make her smile now and then. In the end, he died. From what the manager said, the man had banged on his ceiling, our floor so hard he left holes in it. The wife passed on shortly he did, sadly. The daughter and the grandson seem better now though. She's become a foster mother to a sweetheart toddler and the grandson's on the local HS basketball team. I think he was more than just a dick to us. They ended up getting the cutest little Yorkie mix not long ago. I'm in a similar situation, we live above a really angry old man who hates kids. Well, we happen to have one lol. He's left really nasty, mean notes for us. He's knocked on our door to wake us up early af. He's complained to the HOA. He's written notes to our neighbors about us. He's taken us to court and tried to sue us. We talked with him in a mediation room and discovered that he absolutely hates women. He refused to call me by my name and referred to me as, that one. He also told my BF that he, needs to get control of me. I feel so bad for his wife, she's a mail-order bride from another country. I personally couldn't put up with his shit, 
kudos to her. I used to live in a horrible apartment with paper-thin walls. The people next door were a woman who looked like she was in her seventies and what I thought was her thirty-something grandson. They would yell at each other all day, constantly blast their TV, and the smell of their cigarette smoke would waft through into my apartment and make the place absolutely reek. The worst was at night when the two of them would have loud sex, which is how I figured out they weren't related. Every night for an hour creaking bed banging against my bedroom wall and the old woman moaning like a stuck pig. Nightmarish. I also think the guy kept track of my schedule and watched for me because whenever I came home or went out, even when I took out the garbage, he would be there outside his place, trying to chit-chat with me while staring at my body and being completely gross. Lived there a year, but it felt like ten. I lived in an apartment with slot of rotating tenants. An elderly lady moved in across the hall from me promptly started hoarding. I started to figure it out when her deck slash porch started to fill up with odds and ends furniture including but not limited to a roll top desk. She also yelled at me once for taking her key out of the front door and putting it in the mail slot. Anyway after a couple of weeks I started to realize I hadn't seen her in a while and started to smell something real weird. Turns out she had died and no one knew about it for a week hence the smell. Her family came and cleared out all her stuff about a week after that. This is Wisconsin in the winter and I had my good Doc Martin work boots outside my door because they were wet. They used one of my boots to prop open their door while they moved out and then stole them when they were done. I remember coming across a YouTube account a few years ago where a woman was hiding under tinfoil and filming the window of a condo across the street from hers, talking about how they were sending rays to harm her and she had to protect herself with the foil. About a decade ago I moved into this small farming community with my husband. I opened the window and there was a naked child in the tree in my backyard, shoe is about 6-8-ish and should not have been running around outside naked let alone being naked in a tree. Same situation there though, always showing up asking for snacks. She came to my house with her sister, wearing no shoes in the middle of winter, begging for something to eat because her daddy was passed out drunk and they didn't have any food in the house. I gave her some food and sent her on her way. I called CPS and was later told that her mother was friends with the advocate dude who came out, they went to school together. She assured him that the little girls were only lying to me. They showed up several times asking for food and water, then telling me stories about not having sewage hookup, just letting it run under the house. They told me the power was shut off so they had a generator. No running water at one point so their dad was going to drill a well. Never knew what to believe, multiple calls to CPS didn't resolve anything. On our street there really is only parking on one side of the street, the garages and driveways for most of the houses weren't meant for cars, but this is another rant, the parking is on our side and the people across the street from us at one point had a car for each member of the household and the daughter was a shitty driver so she needed at least two parking spaces so they needed seven parking spaces. So one household was taking a third of the parking. The best space to park is in front of my parents especially in winter as my parents would shovel it all out for easy access, this family never helped to shovel even though they would complain if we didn't shovel out enough, so if my parents were out they would fight to claim my parents' place. They call us the evil neighbors now, because one day when my parents were away, the daughter and so were visiting in their brand new SUV, and of course parked in my parents' spot. Q freak windstorm which destroyed their car and the mums, apparently it was my parents' fault as we had obviously cursed them. Shared a split house with a couple, them upstairs us downstairs. They said they knew that the noise insulation was low and asked us to let them know if it was ever too loud. We texted maybe 10 times to turn down their TV at 3 a.m. directly over our bedroom during weekdays over the course of two years. On the final time, they snapped back how hard it was for them and how hard they tried to please us with the situation and how they even stopped using their surround sound system, in their greater than 500 SQ slash FT unit. At 3 AM. On top of this they constantly moved and on one occasion broke our stuff in the basement storage to the point we eventually stopped using it, 
frequently put shoes in the new dryer to the point it melted rubber on the back, broke said dryer by overstuffing it and leaning heavy equipment against the door so it stopped popping open, accidentally stole packages from us on several occasions, and filled up the other shared space we had with their own stuff so we couldn't use it. Had a neighbor a few houses down who kept to himself. One day he was turning onto our road and I happened to be behind him. Some kids were cutting across his yard so he stopped to yell at them and I couldn't go around so I was stuck. He then started backing up but I had only a little room before backing into a very busy road. He then hit the front of my car and yelling at me. I was maybe 18 at the time and was legitimately terrified. I was able to make it down the block to my house, called my mom and she encouraged me to make a police report. The officer came, was super kind and offered to go to the house of the man who hit me to get his insurance information. The man refused to answer and the officer made a report and called to check in later in the afternoon. That night the neighbor ended up taking a shotgun and pounded on a few neighbor's doors, presumably looking for me. The police were called and quite a few officers responded. They could not find the man so had everyone on our street shelter in place until they could find him. Officers ended up finding him under a boat in his backyard. I don't know if he was arrested or committed but he never was back at his house and his family sold it a few months later. I lived in a three-story apartment building on the middle floor. The bottom floor was basement apartments. It was a very quiet building and a lot of people were older and lived there ten years or more. Then this weird creepy asshole moved in below us. He would play music loud all night and I had to be up for work at 5 a.m. He wouldn't answer the door so we could ask him to turn it down. So I had to jump up and down until he heard it. He had pissed off girls banging on his door screaming for hours and he was home but wouldn't answer. She ran out and poured nail polish all over his car. His apartment was basement but he had a huge window that was right next to the stairs to get in. He never closed the curtains and you would see directly down into his living room where he had built a sex swing with bondage stuff hanging on it. Had to explain what it was to everyone that came over even my mom. Then one day a cop knocked on the door he was holding about 20 pairs of women's underwear and asked me to pick out mine. It was like three pairs and the cop said throw them away the downstairs neighbor had been wearing them because he was stealing them out of the laundry room. I guess the upstairs neighbor was walking in the building and seen her underwear hanging on the sex swing and called the cops. So they arrested him for stealing our underwear, the landlord evicted him. When he got out of jail he was so pissed he was getting evicted he went and bought a bunch of sand and covered the whole apartment in sand and turned the air conditioning all the way up and left it after he switched the electric back into the landlord's name. He was a nightmare neighbor. Current neighbor. She has a small business practice out of her home. She had her customers park on my yard, easement, technically, despite the town telling her she couldn't. Despite all the times I told her to stop, she never did until one person parked facing my house, two feet from my no trespassing signs, cops got called. I filled a complaint against the customer. Never saw that car again, BTW. Then she tried to lease my front yard. Then she tried to buy my house while we lived in it. She told contractors that they could access her yard through ours. They dumps loads of gravel and sand in my front yard as their storage area, and a cement truck tore one eight iron ruts in my yard. A tree on the property line was infested with termites and a huge branch fell on a mutually owned fence, she demanded we pay to have the limb removed because it was damaging the, horribly dilapidated, fence, but she didn't want us to cut down the tree because of the shade it provided her back patio, that was installed at the expense of my yard. The whole tree came down. My so had a neighbor show up with a nail studded baseball bat and try to enter his house to look for the drugs someone stole. But my favorite was the drug house in which the owners were turning out underage girls in exchange for drugs. These owners were always high. It didn't matter if you ran into them at 9 a.m. or 9 p.m., they were always so high just breathing near them gave one a contact high. Anyhow, lots of fights and screaming on the front lawn it was actually worrisome when there wasn't a full-blown screaming fight. 
but my favorite was the last party they had, the slightly underage girls had turned into very underage, so very underage. So cops bust the whole house and we had about 30 people handcuffed face down on the front lawns, including ours, minus 30 degree weather. So I come out to walk the dog and one cop looks away from the guy he was talking to talk to me. Suspect gets to his knee to try and run and cop knocks him down, next handcuff suspect tries to get up and gets whacked down. It was cop whack a mole with pedo night, lasted for hours. Thank God they bulldozed the house and it is a nice bunch of families who haven't had one drunken all-out fight in the front lawn yet. Would bark at my dogs, then call the cops for a noise complaint. Also would get mad at us if we started a campfire in our fire pit, claiming they got smoked out because their window was open. Our fire pit was across the property, so if they could see the smoke, or the fire, they would be leaning on our fence. Our house has a gate to a park, and that's where they would bark and growl at them. Their house was three houses away, and across the park. Got several videos of proof they were barking at our dogs to cause them to bark when we got into a court case about it. Caught them spying on me, and we've never heard from them since. Two guys moved into my apartment building over a year ago, throws parties pretty much every freaking night. It was like a frat house. People coming and going all day long. Found out that one guy was a bartender and, and the other one is a drug dealer. This is in a decent coastal neighborhood in California. The whole building and I started complaining their ridiculous partying schedule. Management does nothing. Complain to the city and narcotics department, nothing happens. Then COVID happened and I was stuck at home all the time. Bartender moved out but drug dealer guy was way worse. We found crack pipes in the garage, so many cigarette butts. All our cars got broken in because he would leave the garage door open at all hours that lets anyone into our garage, bikes stolen. This guy would be up having sex in the middle of the night 2 to 6 a.m. waking up everyone. Since he was a coke head of some sort, he does not sleep and would be blasting music with a subwoofer during the day. I was so bothered daily, depressed was seeing a therapist and couch surfing with friends so I don't have to be home. Management does nothing. I finally moved out after a year of dealing with this and filed small claims case against management. When we first moved into our current home, we asked that our neighbors across the road stop parking out the front of our place, ruining our lawn. They said the last owners had no problem with it. I replied that they no longer own the home and we would like them to stop. They had plenty of space out the front of their own house but didn't want to ruin their own lawn. I was 2-3F at the time, neighbor was 45M. He grabbed me by the front of my hoodie and raised his fist, while screaming in my face. He lost his fucking mind. My husband came out the front to see WTF was going on, so I didn't get punched. Neighbor didn't know I boxed amateur, so ended up my husband pulling me off him by my hoodie. Years later, neighbor is still an absolute F wit. I live in a small complex, only four other buildings, and parking isn't assigned, but we were told in the rules outlined in the lease agreement to only use one parking space per vehicle. Downstairs neighbor kept double parking his minivan. When we went to talk to him he immediately started yelling and threatening to harass us if we tried to talk to him again. Another neighbor complained to him about the double parking about a month later and he threatened to beat up her adult child so she called the police on him. He also has a big sound system directly under my bedroom and plays music and movies at what sounds like full blast in the middle of the night at least three to four days a week. Of course, those are all violations of the rules of the apartment complex and of course the office and management just told us to ignore him and did nothing about it. He was a 19-year-old Chinese guy whose father had bought him the $5 million house we were already living in the basement suite of when it was sold up front. Dude started periodically complaining that I wouldn't stop cooking spicy food or curry, despite the fact that I'm a white person who is a huge wimp with chilies. The most I had used at any point when he complained was a black bean soup large enough to feed an army with three dried chipotles tossed in. 
I caved and switched to making only white people food for a few weeks to make him shut up, he still complained about spicy food when I was, among other things, frying onions in butter to make scrambled eggs and cooking potato soup. I came to the conclusion that he was so rich and clueless he'd probably never lived within 100 feet of a kitchen in his life. Finally, having established that his definition of spicy food was literally any and all human food, he quote-unquote, told me that I should be eating my spicy food in restaurants instead of cooking it. He then illegally evicted me with two weeks' notice on the grounds that I wouldn't stop making curry. We literally spoke to a lawyer who told us we could fight it, but he genuinely had no idea what would possibly fucking happen in court, because at no point in human history has a Chinese person evicted a white person for frying onions because they're that racist against Indian people and also have never lived within 200 feet of a kitchen.